Now we are going to look at a practical example of cracking WPS pins. Wi-Fi Protected Setup, or WPS, is a feature available on most modern Soho access points, to ease the task of setting up wireless access points. It allows users possessing limited knowledge of Wi-Fi configuration and security settings to configure their wireless devices seamlessly. WPS is usually activated by default on most devices that support this optional feature. Although the original intent of the feature was to allow a secure mechanism to configure wireless devices, as implied by the name Wi-Fi Protected Setup. However recently security researchers found serious implementation flaws in WPS, allowing an attacker to gain access to the various security settings pertaining to the compromised APs. WPS supports three different modes of operation, however out of these three, the external registrar mode is most susceptible to brute force attacks, as it lacks any proper authentication mechanism. In order to authenticate to the AP as a registrar, the other party should know the eight-digit numeric PIN number, usually printed on a sticker at the bottom of the AP. Additionally the WPS negotiation process works over the EAP protocol and does not require any prior knowledge of the security settings pertaining to the AP, like encryption keys etc. In order to attack the WPS flaw just mentioned, a couple of tools are available. They are called Reaver and WPS Crack. In our case, we are going to demonstrate this attack using the Reaver tool, already bundled with Backtrack. Reaver performs a brute force attack against the AP, attempting every possible combination in order to guess the AP's 8-digit PIN number. Because of the various weaknesses in the WPS protocol, the tool has to test only about 11,000 pins before the WPS pin can be cracked. The speed at which the cracking process operates depends on a number of factors like the hardware of the AP, protection mechanisms like temporary locking and brute force attempts etc. Usually the WPS key can be cracked within 4 hours. An excellent write-up on this subject, compiled by the author of WPS Crack, is located on the link shown on the screen. Further details can also be found in the companion guide for this course. Protection against this vulnerability varies for each access point, on some WPS can be disabled, on others a firmware upgrade is required etc. A non-exhaustive list of vulnerable devices is maintained in the WPS vulnerability database, mentioned in the companion guide. Now, we are going to start our cracking process by running the WASH tool available with Reaver. This tool scans the network searching for WPS-enabled wireless devices, that can then be cracked using Reaver. Please note that it is important to use the dash uppercase E option with this command to ignore frame checksum errors. We are going to use our test SSID highlighted on the screen to demonstrate WPS cracking. Next we are going to run the Reaver utility, specifying our monitoring mode interface, then the BSSID of our AP, and some other options required for our particular AP. The uppercase S option speeds up the cracking process, and the double V option is enabled to view more verbose output. Since I had already cracked the key a little while ago, the tool inquires whether we want to resume the previous session, in this case we will choose yes. As you see, Weaver has managed to crack the WPS pin configured on our AP and has also managed to retrieve the current WPAPSK key used on the access point. It took about 42 minutes to crack the WPS pin. Once we know the WPS pin, we can also launch more advanced attacks like modifying the configuration and security settings on the access point itself. This can be done by various tools including the WPA supplicant utility we saw earlier. In the next video, we will look at setting up wireless evil twins and honeypots.